The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC does not collect bribe from any individual in order to institute a case on their behalf. If anyone approaches you demanding for money to help you with any case handled by the Commission, do not hesitate to report such entities to any EFCC offers nearest to you. Good evening. A very warm welcome to you as we bring you another edition of the program, The Eagle. My name is Aisha Gambali. EFCC will get you anywhere Anytime. On today's edition of the program, Acting Chairman of the EFCC, Ibrahim Mustafa Magu, has called for the support of all Nigerians, both home and abroad, in winning the war against graft. Also, the Acting Chairman has urged the media to provide any information that could assist the agency's fight against corruption. And the spokesperson of the People's Democratic Party, Olisa Metu, has been arraigned by the EFCC on a seventh count charge, but on money laundering. Metu is alleged to have received the sum of 400 million naira from the former National Security Advisor, Colonel Sambo Dazuki, retired from funds meant for arms procurement without a contract award. We will also bring you a report on the extradition of one Franca Asemota, a Nigerian fugitive to the United Kingdom for offenses badrain and trafficking of minors. Please stay with us as the program continues shortly. Don't go away. <laughs> We begin today's program with a report on the arraignment of the embattled spokesperson of the People's Democratic Party, Olisa Mitu. Mitu was arrested and consequently arraigned by the EFCC after investigations revealed that he had a link with the $2.1 billion arms deal scam. Kamila Gebi has the report. Over to you, Kamila. The embattled spokesperson and his company, Destra Investments Limited, were docked by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, before Justice O.E. Abang of the Federal High Court sitting in Abuja on a seven-count charge bordering on money laundering. Metu is alleged to have received a sum of 400 million naira from the former National Security Advisor, NSA, Colonel Sambo Dasuki, retired from funds meant for arms procurement without contract award, thereby committing an offence contrary to Section 15.2. D of the Money Laundering Prohibition Act 2011 as amended in 2012 and punishable under Section 15.3 of the same Act. He pleaded not guilty when the charges were read to him. Prosecuting counsel Sylvana Stahir thereafter urged the court to fix a date for the commencement of trial. He also prayed the court to order the accused to be remanded in prison custody pending trial. Counsel to the defense Onyechi Ikpazu, SAN, however, prayed the court to discountenance the application of the prosecution, stating that it is illegal and unconstitutional to remand the defendant in prison. Ikpazu said, and I quote, We apply for the court to admit the defendant to bail on liberal terms, and we rest our application on Section 158 of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act 2015. End of quote. While opposing the motion for bail, 
Tahir noted that the defense has not filed a written bail application. Responding, Ekpezu said that the case was a summary trial and that the notice for arraignment was filed and served few hours to the arraignment as opposed to the stipulated seven days notice, thereby giving them little or no time to prepare a formal application. He said, the court can use its discretion to grant the defendant bail, irrespective of whether the application was oral or formal, referring the court to the case of Abiola versus the Federal Republic of Nigeria. After listening to both counsel, Justice Abang posited that the fact of the case of Abiola versus Federal Republic of Nigeria is different from the fact of Metu's case and the Administration of Criminal Justice Act 2015 was not enacted when the case was decided. He consequently refused the accused bail and ordered defense counsel to file and serve the bail application to the prosecution within five hours, adding that the prosecution should respond within 24 hours. Adjourning the case to January 19, 2016 for hearing of arguments on bail application, he ordered that Metu be remanded in prison custody. At the resumed hearing on January 19, Justice Abang, after listening to arguments on bail application, granted Metu bail in the sum of 400 million naira. The judge also ordered that Metu produces two shirties of 200 million naira each who must own properties in Maitama, Abuja and be resident in Abuja. The shirties, he ruled, must also produce the certificates of occupancy of the properties which must be verified by the chief registrar of the court and confirmed by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. The shirties are also to provide three years tax clearance certificates, two passport photographs and swear to affidavit of means. The EFCC is to verify the residences of the shirties and confirm that they both reside in Abuja. The judge also said that Metu must deposit his travel documents with the court pending the period of his trial. He is to return back to Kujia prison until his bail conditions are met. The case was adjourned to January 25, 2016 for commencement of trial. Glad to have you back. The acting chairman of EFCC, Ibrahim Mustafa Magu, has urged the media to provide any information that could assist the agency's fight against corruption. Magu said this during a meeting with online media practitioners and on-air personalities in Lagos. Kamila Gebi again has this report and other activities of the chairman in Lagos. The report. Magu, while seeking the full cooperation and support from the media against corruption in Nigeria, urged the media to provide any information that could assist the agency in combating the menace of corruption. He said such media intelligence will definitely complement the EFCC investigation efforts, adding that the media occupies a vantage position to help or hamper the war on corruption in Nigeria. Mr. Muhammad Bari has admonished us that if we don't kill corruption, Corruption will kill Nigeria. This, for me, is a clarion call. And I consider my appointment as a divine opportunity to change the narrative as far as the fight against corruption in Nigeria is concerned. But considering the enormity of the problem, I am humble enough to admit that I don't have the monopoly of ideas knowledge on how to effectively tackle corruption in Nigeria. This, in fact, is the reason why I have called you here today. Today, this is an opportune moment for me to meet minds with some of the most fertile brains in the media. And I am persuaded that I will profit from this engagement in terms of suggestions and advice that some of you will offer here, today and in the future. He said, the importance of the media as a vehicle for social transformation cannot be overemphasized, taking into account the role played by some of them in ushering the current change in our political fortune. Describing as unfortunate the attempt to use the media to portray the Commission's anti-graft war as selective, the EFCC boss said, the Commission needs the critical support of the media if it must make headway in this important campaign against corruption. Let me assure you that this is just the beginning. The EFCC, under my watch, shall be vigilant as the eagle, which is our symbol. No one 
I repeat, no one, no matter how highly placed or lowly placed, shall be spared if he or she infringes on the laws of the land. I invite the media to assist us to achieve this by making any information that could assist investigations of act of corruption available to the Commission. Such media intelligence would definitely complement the effort of the EFCC. We are quite concerned about raising the competence of journalists who report financial crimes and corruption issues. The Commission had in the past organized workshops for journalists across the zones where we have offices. I pledge greater commitment to this empowerment in the coming months. He urged the media to enhance their credibility by keeping their platforms away from unscrupulous individuals who have reasons other than national interests as their motivation. Also in Lagos, Magu called for the support of Nigerians in winning the war against graft, stressing that the commission is ready to go tough on corrupt persons, no matter who is involved. Magu said this when he paid a courtesy visit to Channels Television in Lagos. He thanked the station for joining in the fight against corruption by defining its stance against graft through its balanced news reportage and called for more support from the populace. Describing the fight against corruption as a fight to finish, Magu said he is ready to lay his life down in ensuring that corruption is eradicated from Nigeria. The EFCC remain dogged and resolute in the pursuit of its mandate. Our resolve to make corrupt practices difficult and unattractive is total. The limit of Nigeria, however, cannot be achieved by the EFCC. The entire nation, including China's television, was key into this resolve. So that, we can, so that we will collectively kill the monster of corruption and free our future from its negative consequences. The anti-corruption czar, whose record of fierce battle against corruption dates back to 2004 when the commission was established, said the EFCC could not take for granted the collective effort of all Nigerians in ridding the country of corruption. Corruption is a social cancer. We cannot afford to allow the corrupt ones in our midst continue in their nefarious ways. Building institution, institutional synergy against corrupt practices is one important way of eradicating this evil. Channel television has a serious role to play in sensitizing Nigerians to the evil of corruption, alerting them about the fraudulent practice of those found to be corrupt. The chairman chief executive officer of Channels Television, John Momo, who received Magu and his team, said the country has been looted very badly. He said the fight against corruption must be sincere if the country must be rescued from the canker worm. This is our country. We must we'll make sure that this country survives. And one of the uh, greatest battles that this country has before it now is a battle of corruption. Uh, I must say that uh, the EFCC uh, is doing all it can and will be willing to partner with you in all ways possible to make sure that you achieve your objective. Because at the end of the day, it impacts on this nation, it makes us to be well respected abroad, and then it keeps all the bad ones behind bars. Magu was accompanied on the visit by the head of operations, EFCC Lagos Zonal Office, Ilyasu Kwarabai, Director of Public Affairs, EFCC, Osita Mwaja, and other members of the Public Affairs Department. Away from Lagos now to Ibadan, the Oyo state capital, where stakeholders in the anti-corruption war have expressed satisfaction with the works of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, and assured it of their continued support. Olufemi Adeyemi reports. The assurances were given to the acting chairman of the EFCC, Mr. Ibrahim Mustafa Mago, who was on a working visit to the Oyo state capital. Mago solicited the support guidance and collaboration of all stakeholders in our state. At the office of the state chief judge, he stressed that the commission and the judiciary are partners in the campaign to rid the nation of corrupt practices. He specifically requested for the designation of some judges to hear EFCC cases and also formally informed the judges of the opening of a zonal office of the EFCC in Ibadan. 
He assured his host that the commission would transfer all cases relating to their zone to the new office. I want us to work as a team, as a team, so that we create a forum where we can ideas. I, I will, my dream is that we should be survived by you know, whatever we do, so that survive whatever we do before you, the diligent investigation must have been conducted so that it will use the, 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 the slow dispensation because we have problems that can't be everywhere. So, so that, that's why I say there is a need to come and see my Lord and I pray to them to supervise us, to direct us, to advise us, to enable us to have our, our work. The Chief Judge of Oyo State, Justice Muntai Ladipo Abimbola, scored the EFCC high in its handling of economic and financial crimes and assured the trial of suspected corruption offenders will be accorded more attention. Mr. Chairman, sir, and my lords, economic crimes or crimes against the economy no doubt has a devastating and devastating effect not only on the economy but against the psych of the nation. The effect of such crimes no doubt affects the economic growth as well as the image of this country, both at its national and international frontiers. The disastrous effect cannot be quantified. For this reason, we in the judiciary have a feeling and we are committed to ensure that we offer ourselves in cooperation with the officers and operatives to ensure that offenders are tried within the shortest possible time. Also, the Solicitor General and Permanent Secretary, Oyo State Ministry of Justice, Prince Aditunji Wasu, Badi Gessin, advised that the EFCC should embark on compulsory training of its legal officers. He also advised the Commission to consider reducing the number of count charges preferred against suspects and pursue plea bargaining in a more practical way. At the Department of State Services, Oyo State Command, Magu reiterated his call for cooperation and expressed the desire of the EFCC to work with the service. In response, Director of State Security, Oyo State Command, L.B. Baba, assured the EFCC of collaboration and support, adding that the era of competition is gone for good. The same assurance was given by the Oyo State Commissioner of Police, Mr. Leye Oyebadi. According to him, the EFCC and the Nigerian police are fighting the same monster of corruption and must work together. He said the success of the EFCC is the pride of the Nigeria police. He added that both agencies are pursuing the same objectives, which is to sanitize the society by ensuring that the programs of the government is not derailed by corrupt practices. Margo also visited Tribune House, publisher of the Nigerian Tribune titles, where he sought more collaboration and positive reporting of the activities of the EFCC. According to him, corruption is a social malaise and the African newspapers of Nigeria has serious roles to play in sensitizing Nigerians to the evils of corruption, alerting them about the fraudulent practices of those found to be corrupt and educating members of the society on the preventive ways of checking shady practices. In response, the editor-in-chief of the Tribune titles, Mr. Edward Dixon, commended the EFCC for its relentless war on all forms of economic and financial crimes and assured the Commission of objective coverage of its activities. The opening of the zonal office of the EFCC formed the basis of the working visit of the acting chairman to the state and the office is now on stream. Head of operations of the new office, Mr. Oseni Kazim, assured that the office will run in the widely acclaimed tradition of the EFCC. Olufemi Adeyemi, reporting for The Eagle. Thank you very much, Olufemi, for that report. It is hoped that the people of Oyo State and the neighboring states will take advantage of the new office to report any suspected case of economic and financial crimes to the Commission. Still on The Eagle today, Justice Abdul Kafaraiti of the Federal High Court sitting in Abuja has ordered the extradition of one Franca Asemota, a Nigerian fugitive, whose extradition is being sought through the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation to the United Kingdom for offenses bordering and trafficking of minors. Golden Agu covered the court proceedings and now brings us the report. Over to you, Golden. Asemota is wanted by the UK government for trafficking of minors to Europe through London. She was alleged to have been organizing a network that specializes in trafficking young women, mostly teenagers from remote Nigerian villages, into Europe using Heathrow Airport as a transit hub. The girls were promised education or jobs such as hairdressing in countries including France and Spain, 
but were forced into prostitution. However, the long arm of the law caught up with Asemota when she was arrested by the operatives of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, on Wednesday, March 24, 2015, in Benin, Edo State, on suspicion of money laundering offenses. On arrest, checks on her profile revealed that she had been on the wanted list of the National Crime Agency, NCA. When the case came up on Monday, January 11, 2016, Asemota's counsel, Uguchuku Ezekiel, prayed the court to grant his client's bill to enable her to seek medical attention as she had spent almost a year in custody. Akuta Payos Ukeima from the office of the AGF, however, opposed the application saying that it will be better to ask for a short date for ruling on the substantive matter. Consequently, the judge adjourned the case for ruling. At the resumed sitting, Justice Kafarati granted the extradition request and ordered that the accused be extradited to the United Kingdom to face trial for the charges filed against her. Golden Ago, reporting for The Eagle. Thank you, Golden, for that report. You're still watching the program, The Eagle. You too can be part of this program by joining us on our Facebook platform at Official EFCC. Or send an email to us via the eagle at EFCC Nigeria. Org. You can also join us on our Google platform at Official EFCC or Official EFCC NG at gmail.com. Let us quickly take some messages from our platforms. One NSC Real One dropped a comment via Facebook and he said, I am tired of corruption. End of quote. Well, Real One, we are all tired of corruption. That is why the anti graft agencies are calling on all Nigerians to support the war. Real one, if you're tired of corruption, then do something. Be a whistleblower by exposing all acts of corruption around you to the EFCC. And also from Facebook, one Nasir Yusuf said, and I quote, efforts should be geared towards state and local government as they embezzle more than what has been investigated at the federal level. End of quote. Thank you, Yusuf. The war against corruption is not restricted to a particular sector. The EFCC leaves no stone unturned in its quest for a corrupt, free Nigeria. All the Commission needs is the support of Nigerians in order to realize its mandate. And that is all we have for you on that segment. Thank you very much for the feedback. Please keep sending your comments, opinions, questions, and suggestions to us. We appreciate your efforts. And on that note, we call it a day on today's edition of The Eagle. Please join us same time and on same station next week for another informative edition. Please don't forget to drop your comments or suggestions via the eagle at efccnigeria.org or our Facebook platform at Official EFCC. And if you have missed any part of this program, not to worry. You can still catch up with us via our YouTube platform at Official EFCC. And before we go, a quick rundown of our major stories today. We brought you a report on the arraignment of Olisa Metu, the spokesperson of the People's Democratic Party. We also brought you a report on the visit of the acting chairman of the EFCC, Ibrahim Mago, to Lagos, where he sought the support of the media in the fight against corruption. On behalf of the entire Eagle crew, my name is Aisha Gambari. Until we come your way next week, be part of that change that you desire in this country. God bless Nigeria. Bye-bye.